In this example problem, we're going to find the nominal moment capacity for a simply supported T-beam. Uh, this T-beam has an overall depth of 20 inches. It's part of a uh, one-way slab on beams system, so we have uh, continuous beam, uh, slabs running in the uh, uh, transverse direction. Um, and then we have a web width of 10 inches, uh, space or distance between um, inside of webs as 50 inches and a depth uh, from the top of the section to the center of our steel 16 inches. Uh, we have um, six number 11 bars uh, to give us a, a total overall area of steel in um, one uh, beam of 9.36 square inches and 4 KSI concrete and 60 KSI steel. Um, so the first step is going to be to calculate the effective flange width. So we want to know uh, what is the width of the flange that will uh, be engaged uh, for one um, T-beam. So we can do this using our uh, ACI um, provisions, uh, looking at our um, 8HF. So 8 times 3 inches is uh, 24 inches. Uh, 0.5 SW, so space between the webs. 50 inches is 25 inches. Um, and I forgot to tell us that um, our span length uh, of these beams is 14 feet. So we can calculate our LN over 8. So we'll have 14 feet times 12 inches per foot divided by 8 is going to give us 21 inches. So uh, 21 inches is the minimum of our uh, three values. So that's the value we're going to use moving forward. Um, so now we can solve for B sub F. And we'll get our B sub F equal to 2 times 21 inches plus our BW, which is 10 inches. So we'll get an uh, overall B sub F equal to 52 inches. So this will be our, our B uh, sub F, or flange width, uh, moving forward in this example. So next we need to check and see uh, if our compression block lies in our top flange. Um, and we'll do this using equilibrium. So we'll look at our, our tension equal to compression and solve for our A. And then we need to plug in all of our uh, values here. So we'll have uh, an area of all of our steel is 9.36 square inches times 60 KSI steel divided by 0.85 times 4 KSI concrete times our B, which is 52 inches. Um, and we remember that our B is the width of our compression block region. So here our compression block is in the top. So we use uh, BF, the, the width of our compress uh, compression block, the width of our uh, top flange. Um, so we can find our A then to be equal to 3.18 inches. So we can see that our A, 3.18, is greater than our flange height of 3 inches. Uh, so we know that um, our compression block doesn't fall in the top flange alone. We're going to move down into our web. Um, so we're going to need to use our um, analysis procedure specific to T-beams um, where the compression block uh, falls in the web region. We'll next need to carry out our T-beam analysis and find our nominal moment capacity. Uh, so first, we can find the um, area of steel required to balance the compression force in our flange, and then find the moment associated with the, that, uh, that flange um, force couple. Uh, so we can find our ASF um, using this expression. So ASF is 0.85 times our F prime C for KSI times BF minus BW, so 52 minus 10 inches, uh, times our HF, which is 3 inches. And then we divide all this by 
our Fy, uh, which is 60 KSI. Um, so we'll find our ASF to be equal to uh, 7.14 square inches. So then we can uh, use this to find our flange moment. So we'll plug in our values, 7.14 inches squared times 60 KSI concrete times our D, which is 16 inches minus 3 inches, the height of our flange, divided by 2 uh, to give us our uh, moment um, due to the, the flange steel force couple being uh, 6,212 kip inches. So next we can move on to our web and uh, remaining steel force couple. Um, so we can first find the uh, tension force provided by the remaining steel. So we'll take our total steel, uh, 9.36 square inches, subtract off the steel that we used up in the flange force couple, 7.14, and take this times our 60 KSI yield strength. Um, and we'll find our uh, T sub web to be 133.2. Kips. We can then use this to find our A or the depth of our compression block. Um, so using equilibrium setting T web equal to C web, uh, we can find our A. So we'll have 133.2 kips divided by 0.85 times 4 KSI times our BW, which is 10 inches. And we'll find our A here to be 3 0.85 inches. And then we can find uh, the moment caused by this force couple uh, to be our T sub web, which we found to be 133.2 kips times D minus A over 2. And this will give us our moment uh, due to this force couple to be uh, 1,870 kip inches. Uh, so then we'll add the flange moment and the web moment up. Uh, so we'll have our 6,212 kip inches plus our uh, 1,870 kip inches to find our total moment to be 8,082 kip inches. So this is our final moment. Um, in order to check to make sure that we're tension controlled and we're yielded, uh, we'll need um, to check to make sure that our uh, AS provided or um, the six number 11 bars is less than our AS max, um, which we'll do in, in the next step. The last check that we can do is we can check to see if the area of steel that we have in our section is less than the uh, maximum area of steel uh, that we can have if we still want to be uh, tension controlled. Um, so we'll do this using our strain diagram and our, our section. And uh, ACI allows us to, to have um, tension controlled um, if we have a strain of 0 0.005 or greater in the bottom layer of our steel. Um, so we need to find uh, the distance from the top of our section to the center or to the center of that bottom layer of steel. Um, so I did that here. It's just the D, which is the distance to the center of our, our two layers of steel, uh, plus uh, a half inch, which is a half of the spacing um, between the two layers of bars, and then plus DB over two, which is um, the radius of, of the bottom layer of bars. Uh, we can use these values to then find uh, our neutral axis um, when we're tension controlled. So we're looking for, for our, our C here. Uh, so we'll do this by uh, setting up our, our similar triangles. So we'll have 0 0.003 over C uh, is equal to 0 0.005 uh, over D uh, sub t, which is uh, 17.21 inches minus c. 
Uh, so we can solve for uh, C here, and we'll get C uh, equal to 3 eighths times 17.21 inches. Um, so we'll get C equal to 6.43 inches. We can use our C then to find our A. So we'll see our A is equal to beta 1 times C. So our beta 1 here we found to be 0.85 for 4 KSI concrete uh, times 6.43 inches. Uh, will give us an A of 5.46 inches. We can see that our A um, and our compression block is past the top of our top flange, or, or past the, the depth of our top flange, so we're sneaking down into the web of our section. Because the compression block uh, sneaks down into our web, we're going to need to, uh, I guess, split the um, compression block up into two sections like, uh, like we did before. Um, so we'll have our total compression force is equal to 0.85 uh, F prime C, the um, magnitude of our stress across the, the depth of our compression block, times um, BF minus BW times HF. Uh, so the area that I'm shading blue here, the area just in uh, the top flanges, and then BW times A, the area that's uh, remaining that I'm crossing the other way in red. Um, so we can plug in our values, and we'll have 0.85 uh, F prime C, which is 4 KSI, uh, times BF, so 52 inches minus 10 inches times the height of our flange, which was 3 inches, uh, plus 10 inches, times 5.46 inches. And this will give us a magnitude of our compression force uh, equal to 614.1 kips. We can then set T equal to our compression force, uh, and we know our T is equal to AS, I'm going to say max times FY, uh, equal to our compression force, um, and then we can solve for our AS max. So AS max uh, equal to 614.1 kip divided by 60 KSI steel, uh, which will give us an AS max of 10.24 square inches. Uh, so we can check this AS max uh, versus our AS provided um, to see if we're still tension controlled in our section. And in this example, uh, we indeed are still tension controlled.